Seth MacFarlane is known for creating recognizable shows such as Family Guy and American Dad. Live from the Quahog Community Center, it's Up Late with Stewie and Brian. But he's also known for his wide range of voices. And today, we're looking at how these characters stack up when it comes to morality. Oh yeah! Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Seth MacFarlane Voice Characters Good to Evil. Before we start, we need to talk about a few exclusions from this list. We're excluding any characters who only make bit appearances in Robot Chicken or only appear in Cutaway Gags and Family Guy, since they don't appear long enough or often enough to earn a spot on this list. This is how I talk. The accent is nothing more than an affectation. As usual, we'll be starting with the most noble of the batch and moving our way down. These characters are the good. Taking our gold medal of good is Ida Davis from Family Guy. Ida is the parent of Glenn Quagmire who underwent gender reassignment. Ida was a soldier during the Vietnam War. It was an honor to serve with him. And is a war hero. After her transition, she's proud of herself. What do you think, boys? And loves talking about it, much to Glenn's dismay. She makes a multitude of appearances throughout the series, being invited to the Griffin's Thanksgiving alongside Glenn, where she says that she doesn't agree with Kevin deserting the army. No, Brian, I do not understand Kevin's choice and I do not support it. Her other major appearance was being part of the search party to find Glenn when he's kidnapped. Ida is a loving parent and will give up body parts for her son. I knew you were down in the dumps, so I brought you something to cheer you up. Earning her the gold medal of good. Earning our silver medal of good is Greg Corbin from American Dad. He's the resident newscaster of Langley Falls, as well as the Smith's neighbor. Greg is one of the only out gay men in the neighborhood and is also a member of the Log Cabin Republicans. We're members of the Log Cabin Republicans. Which surprised his ex-partner, Terry. You're a Republican? Honey, I can explain. Greg may be overbearing when it comes to his daughter and doesn't shy away from gossip, but he is a good person. Greg is a good partner and is one of the people raptured into heaven. You may notice my partner Greg isn't here. That's because he was raptured. Greg may be gossipy, but this negative trait pales in comparison to some people further down this list. Grabbing the bronze medal is Johan Krauss from Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Krauss is made up of a gaseous creature within a mechanical suit sent to take over the field operations for the BPRD. Johan Krauss, at your service. He was against Hellboy's violent tendencies from early on. Stay focused at all times. Trying to help cull these tendencies and warning him that his temper gets the best of him. Your temper it makes you sloppy. Try to control it, Agent Hellboy. Krauss then helped the BPRD defeat the Golden Army and after the deaths of their leaders, retired from the BPRD and paranormal work. Our next spot goes to Phoenix and Ferb's Jeff McGarland. Jeff appears in one episode and was kidnapped by Doof to watch his television pilot. Just a thought though, can we give the platypus a girlfriend? And annoy Doof enough to make him leave with his incessant meddling. The only thing he did afterwards was steal Doof's idea and rebrand it as his own show. Ah, he was right. This is better. I should have sold out. But this plagiarism does not go unnoticed, causing him to fall outside of the top three. Next, we can't forget about Ted from the movie of the same name. Ted is a teddy bear who came to life thanks to a wish from his best friend and surrogate brother, John. I wish you could really talk to me. After coming to life, he became a Hollywood celebrity and child star, and after the burnout that follows, crashes at his Thunder Buddy's apartment. Ted throws wild parties in the apartment. Oh, Johnny, thank Christ you made it. And breaks into Tom Brady's house. Wait, wait, Mr. Brady! Even though Ted has his problems, he cares about John, his wife, and his son. He loses everything he loves, from his bank accounts to his job, and even his wife thanks to a court ruling. In that Ted is not a person. But after losing all this, he tries his best to get it back by trying to hire the right lawyer. I'd like to take your case, Ted. He was ruled as property by the state of Massachusetts, but he's just as much of a person as anyone else. With that, we finished up the good category and we now delve deep and reach the gray area. Opening up the gray area, we have Wayne the Brain McLean from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Wayne appears in one episode and is the main antagonist. He's a competitor of Frylock and his mind powers. Wayne has the ability to form anything with his mind, from real people to buildings, and has complete control over them after they formed. He uses these powers to win in bar trivia, going as far as to make the host give Frylock an impossible question. 
He is malicious, but only to the point of wanting to feel adequate for women. When Frylock tells him that he can form a girlfriend, Wayne thanks him and does so, the two flying off and never being seen from again. Wayne isn't a bad guy and could barely classify as an antagonist. Next is Tom Tucker from Family Guy. Tom Tucker is the other newscaster that Seth MacFarlane voices. We now go live to Asian correspondent Trisha Takanawa. And is definitely the worst of the two. Hey, screw up! Tom is the anchor man for Quahog 5 News and has been for a long time, having already gone through two co anchors and multiple bad events. He often made fun of his co anchor, so much so that she tried to frame him for a series of murders. Tom doesn't have a lot of spotlight episodes, and the one he does appear in, he's narcissistic and misogynistic. Whose room is this? It's, uh, my room. Next, we have Dr. Elmer Hartman. Dr. Hartman is the Griffin family's doctor and is irresponsible. You guys, I've been trying to keep my birthday a secret. Hartman is known to be the worst doctor in the hospital. Now I'll just pop in the how-to video and we'll get started. Performing a back adjustment while drunk or leaving his phone in Joe's back, making him into a quadriplegic. Turns out Dr. Hartman's cell phone was pressing on my spinal cord. Hartman is an idiot, there's no doubt about it, but he's not malicious. Next is the character with the closest voice to Seth MacFarlane, Brian Griffin. Brian is a talking white Labrador and family dog of the Griffins who's turned into a pretentious alcoholic. Brian is relatively smart. You're a writer? I, I like to consider myself an observer. <laughs> Supposedly being a member of Mensa, but still neglects his son. God, you're a terrible father. And can't hold down a steady job. He can be, or is, racist, such as not picking Cleveland when working as a cab driver, as well as blaming things on others, like blaming the aforementioned racism on his father. I, I get that from my father, he's from a different generation. He's not that great of a person, using people to further himself, such as using his son's fame to get ahead. You know what, Dad? I'm starting to think that you've just been using me. Or Stewie's genius to further his own plans and ideals. You bastard! You've been using my time machine to nail your boss ganks! Brian isn't completely terrible, but he definitely deserves this spot in the gray area. Well, I can't be tired at one in the morning. <laughs> right behind Brian is Stewie Griffin. Stewie is a flamboyant infant son of Peter and Lois Griffin and a maniacal genius. Stewie's well-spoken with an advanced vocabulary, and while he's calmed down a lot in recent years, when was the last time you tried to blow something up or take over the world or, or even use the phrase damn you? He wasn't always this way. In earlier episodes, Stewie's maniacal side was in full force, wanting not only to kill his mother, but dominate the world. New president of the world. Greetings, loyal minions. And while he never accomplishes either of these, his attempts pull him down further. He's committed multiple atrocious acts, ranging from beating and shooting Brian to creating an evil clone of himself. The reason he doesn't rank any lower is because the only person he cares about is Brian. You know what I want for Christmas? I want my friend back. And struggles to do anything wrong towards him, even going back in time to save his life. Stewie is only slightly worse than Brian, but honestly, the two of them are interchangeable. Rounding out our gray area is American Dad's Stan Smith. Stan is a CIA agent who's been working with them since the 80s and is always on alert for terrorist activity. Everyone in your homes, no! He was not popular in school, being bullied to the extent of having pigs dropped on him. As he grew more confident, he also grew crazier. I'm going Stan. Some examples include locking up his neighbors in his backyard, as well as stealing a baby because it would go to a gay couple. He also kidnaps people, ranging from Hillary Duff to The Weeknd. That's why you kidnapped this guy. Stan is violent when his job calls for it, but not everything he does is bad. He loves his family, even Roger, allowing Roger to live in his house because he saved his life. He ranks this low because he has committed many crimes against humanity. We have reached the end of the gray area and now delve into the depths of the bad to evil category. Starting off the bad to evil category is Mike from Illumination Sing. Mike is the greedy and self-centered, classically trained jazz musician Mouse who was part of Buster Moon's competition. A penny? How dare you! I happen to have studied at the Lincoln School of Music! Mike is driven by power, money, and the allure of feminine mice. That prize? It's mine. And hangs around a crowd that doesn't like him. He's not honest, managing to cheat at card games despite his size, and swindling a trio of bears out of their money. His best trait is that he stands up for himself and appreciates when his girlfriend saves him. Get in! Quick! 
he ranks at the top of the bad area because his good traits may not outrank his bad ones. Eccentric alien and disguise aficionado, Roger Smith from American Dad is next. Roger is a sarcastic, surly, amoral, and hedonistic alien who lives with the rest of the Smith family in Langley Falls. Roger was caught cheating on Emperor Zhang Roger. and was known for demanding extravagant and vain services from the island he was a dictator of. Whoever made this chicken should have his hands cut off, then have his feet cut off, then shot, then killed. He's committed an unmentionable amount of crimes from using his foster children for slave labor. That's right, foster children. Hard work builds character. Various drug offenses or killing a group of people over $20. He's also petty, letting a wrecking ball hit Francine because she didn't cook his steak correctly or trying to murder the Smiths because they roasted him. Welcome and thank you for coming. Are you going to kill us now? However, he's not all bad. He was willing to die for the Smiths and even save the life of Stan after just meeting him. The main reason he can't rank any lower is because acting nice literally poisons him. I was nice in the end. So this fey pansexual non-human is just naturally this way, hence not falling to the bottom three. Next on our list is the main character of Family Guy, Peter Griffin. Peter is the near psychopath, petty, and patronizing patriarch of the Griffin family. Peter is a terrible father, not only constantly making fun of Meg, but physically abusing her beating her, and on one occasion, shooting her. He's anger prone, getting into multiple fights over things as petty as an expired coupon. Uh, that nice chicken outside gave me this coupon. He's jealous and fearful of Lois leaving him, but still finds time to gloat about being right when she's wrong about something. Just like there was no apocalypse, he shoots, he scores! He's also a drug user, everything from cocaine to crystal meth. And while this is not bad on its own, it leads to a lot of the problems he faces. Even with his mental shortcomings, which lead to the death of his stepfather, he's smarter than some people, such as James Woods. Ooh, a piece of candy. He also lacks honor, abandoning the revolt that Carter's workers were throwing so that Carter could give him U.S. citizenship. But I'm glad I'm finally an American again. Being an immigrant is a real pain in the ass. When it comes down to it, Peter doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities. He's not the worst character in the show and still doesn't land in the bottom three, but he is pretty close. Grabbing the bronze medal of evil is Family Guy's Glenn Quagmire. Glenn is good friends with Peter, Cleveland, and Joe, and is the perverted neighbor of the Griffins. Okay, let's get me set up on this Tinder thing. I can't wait to start getting laid at the push of a button. Glenn is an airline pilot and a former ensign of the United States Navy. Do I need to remind you I actually am a veteran? And while there is honor in these positions, Glenn doesn't show it outside of these jobs. He is promiscuous, and that's why he ranks so low, with certain words said within his house causing mechanical arms to strap down or throw a woman out. What's wrong with you, Holder Downer 5000? That's just for women! He's known to only like women for their bodies, which shows his true colors more often than not. He's committed plenty of crimes from violating a dead body <laughs> to assaulting multiple women and murdering Jeffrey Finkelman for abusing his sister. He hates Brian to a sadistic level, running him over and telling him to jump off a roof to see if he will land on his feet, and laughing sadistically when he fails to do so. Glenn lands here on the list, and yet not the worst character from Family Guy. Carter Pewterschmidt takes the silver medal of evil and is definitely the worst character from Family Guy. Carter is Lois's wealthy father who owns both U.S. Steel and Pewterschmidt Industries and is a stereotypical greedy millionaire. Carter is bigoted in a number of different ways. Hello, Griffin. Mr. Pewterschmidt? Hey, how you been? And is open about it. To Carter, money equals happiness. Well, money and causing Peter a lot of pain, forcing Peter to fish at the bottom of a glass filled with salt and barbed wire, all for $5. His greed causes a lot of problems. He creates a smear campaign against marijuana specifically to make money. Now I have to get hemp illegalized again, and the only way to do that is to start a fear campaign. He also has the cure for cancer stashed away. Specimen Z is a cure for cancer. And doesn't release it to the public because he knows he can make more money from treating cancer than curing it. Because there's far more money to be made in treating a disease than in curing it. He says he loves his daughter Lois, but still refuses to pay her ransom when she's kidnapped. Sorry, Pumpkin, you know we don't negotiate with kidnappers. Family policy. He hates Peter so much that he was willing to pay his daughter millions of dollars not to marry him. Ten years ago, Daddy offered to give us ten million dollars, and I turned it down. He employs multiple forms of slave labor, such as the Rancor under his mansion, and the Mexican immigrants he exploits as underpaid gardeners. 
The reason he ranks so low but not at the bottom is simply because he shows some compassion to his grandchildren. There's my little guy. Well, Grandpa's here. He's one of the few characters to not treat Meg horribly and help Chris get into a prestigious private school. However, these good moments are dwarfed by his endless string of terrible deeds. Finally, the gold medal of evil goes to Emperor Sheev Palpatine from Robot Chicken. Emperor Palpatine was hard to rank on this list, but we can confirm that he's still done everything from the original Star Wars trilogy, plus more. A short list of crimes he committed in both continuities include the initiation of Order 66, which killed hundreds of Jedi, and the creation of the Death Star, which has killed millions, not to mention the wars he started, which killed billions. He's also responsible for the creation of Darth Vader, and assumed to also train Darth Maul like the original continuity. He's a manipulative, self-centered sociopath who's possibly committed multiple genocides. In just the robot chicken continuity, he has anger issues and frustration problems, and lacks confidence in his Sith apprentice, Darth Vader. He confidently brags about his murderous exploits to other powerful people. Palpatine is a violent, maniacal genius who has killed so many people that he's ahead of Carter by many, many miles, and he deserves the worst spot on our list. But what do you think? Who's the most evil Seth MacFarlane character? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.